Hey guys, okay, I want to talk about low thyroid here. Here's a lot of questions that we have is why do patients feel symptoms throughout the whole body uh, when it's just a thyroid issue? And this is what I want to address. When somebody has a low thyroid, they typically will get on a thyroid hormone, but nothing's being done to the thing that's causing the low thyroid. So the first question you should ask yourself is why do I personally have a low thyroid? If you don't know that, there's lots of tests that you can do. Uh, the most common cause for this is a disease called Hashimoto's disease. They're saying close to 70 to 80 percent of patients with low, low thyroid will actually suffer from Hashimoto's. So in these cases, this is an autoimmune disease. The thyroid here is just the victim. One of the many victims throughout the whole body that, that's, that's caused by Hashimoto's. So the, the last of our worries is really the thyroid. Our big focus is going to be the Hashimoto's. So when somebody has an autoimmune disease, in this case Hashimoto's, they'll have what's called TH17 cells. So we'll just draw this here. TH17 cells. Okay, when this TH17 pathway, this is kind of how your immune system functions. In fact, I'll show you some other things that we'll use here. T3 cells, we have TH1 cells, we have TH2 cells. This is kind of like how your immune system functions. When this TH17 cell increases, these patients are going to have a lot more symptoms and their quality of life is going to be a lot worse. Now sometimes patients that are suffering with low thyroid and Hashimoto's, this has really calmed down just kind of in a dormant state. Nothing's really flared it up much. So these patients will have symptoms. But when this flares up, these patients are going to have a lot more symptoms throughout the body. It's also going to increase what's called inflammatory cytokines. This is kind of like when you sprain your ankle and you get that inflammation in the ankle, the same process will occur, but it goes throughout the whole body. So these patients are in a chronic inflamed state. And that causes a slew of problems with uh, all sorts of stuff, physiologically, biochemically, hormonally, causes problems with your blood sugar levels, causes problems with your intestinal tract, causes problems with your brain, neurological tissue, you name it. Another thing that we worry about too when this occurs is what's called NF kappa beta. Okay. Same process will occur when this increases, this will increase, cause a lot more problems with the whole body. So when this occurs, these patients will have multiple triggers that will cause this to flare up. And our goal is to identify what those triggers are. And so if we just go through and we list these triggers, let's say an average Hashimoto's patient comes in, they might have a couple dietary lifestyle and environmental things that will cause this to trigger. But then also they might have, let's say, a blood sugar issue, a methylation problem in the liver, intestinal permeability issues, maybe something, something as simple as a bacterial infection in the intestinal tract, uh, let's say a bowel transformation problem in the liver, let's say hormonal defects, let's say insulin resistance, uh, insulin surges that will be caused by insulin resistance. It's kind of a perpetuating cycle of problems. So once this increases, uh, these items will increase this, cause it to flare up, but then once this increases, this will just create more imbalances and cause more problems and then these imbalances flare this up even more and now we have a vicious cycle of problems and these patients will go from doctor to doctor to doctor not feeling any improvement and getting a handful of medications for symptoms but really nothing's being done to any of these imbalances and that's why these patients will end up feeling little to no improvement. And so our whole focus and our whole goal is to try to identify, okay, what imbalances and what dietary and lifestyle and environmental things are causing this to flare up? And what can we do to get these imbalances function a lot better? Another big goal here, which is, which is complicated, is you have to identify which one of these do you have to work on first? Because if you start working on these imbalances here, but these two are causing these, then the patient isn't going to feel improvement. So you have to be strategic about your treatment plan and identify what's really going on there as well. Also, if we can increase what's called regulatory T cells, this will start to significantly decrease this as well. So there's lots of things that will increase regulatory T cells. Um, tumoral active, which is a, a supplement from Apex Energetics, is really common. Turmeric, uh, which you can, you can use on your food. There's also vitamin D, which will increase regulatory T cells. Uh, a slew of other things will increase this. Glutathione is a really common one that will increase regulatory T cells. Then you also have to go in and identify uh, these two pathways. Sometimes when we have B cells and natural killer cells that are displaced, or let's say they're, they're lopsided here, if you can stimulate one of these pathways and get them nice and even again, this will drastically decrease this TH17 cell as well. It's obviously a lot more complicated than this, but I'm trying to 
show you guys a simple uh, plan when it comes to autoimmune diseases and, and specifically in this case Hashimoto's and why it can be pretty complicated on, on why these patients don't improve with, with conventional treatment. And, and sometimes you know, you'll see these patients are just constantly flared up. They have a ton more symptoms, a ton more problems, it creates a ton more imbalances and these patients just feel awful. Then they go to the doctor, the doctor says, oh your TSH is fine and these patients want to rip their hair out because they feel so frustrated because nothing's being done to any of these imbalances. And so they think they're crazy, their spouse thinks they're crazy, everyone around them thinks they're crazy, and really they're not crazy, they're just being totally mismanaged because our big focus is the autoimmune response. If we don't work on the autoimmune response, we're going to fail every time. It's crucial. So we have to do the right testing, uh, you know, the right protocols in order to help these patients. A big problem too, let's say these patients have two specific food triggers dietary triggers or environmental triggers. If, and, and obviously every patient is different, so these imbalances can be different for every patient. It's important to customize a personalized treatment plan for each specific patient as well. If these patients are doing awesome, they go from let's say three good days out of the month and now they have 25 good days out of the month. They're doing, they're doing awesome. All these imbalances are functioning a lot better. This has really calmed down. If they start eating these two foods that cause it to trigger, it's going to flare this up like crazy and eventually they're going to be as bad as they were before they started. So the patients also have to be educated and be taught the tools to kind of keep this in check once it's calmed down. If they don't, we're going to have problems. You know, you can't cure Hashimoto's. You're going to have this for the rest of your life. And so it's crucial, one, to identify the triggers and calm all this stuff down, but then teach the patients how to keep it in check. Another common thing too is that you, you're, you might have flare-ups for no reason, right? I mean, let's say somebody has a death of a family member, that's going to flare up. There's nothing that we can do to, to, to not have it flare up. And so another big goal for us is to really teach these patients how to recover faster if they have a flare-up. So let's say they accidentally eat one of these foods and it causes it to flare up. Uh, depending on what these look like as far as these immune pathways are and what their imbalances look like, we'll teach them different strategies to help recover faster. So instead of taking three weeks to recover, it might only take them a couple days to recover. Uh, if someone has a death of a family member, same type of process, it's going to flare up, there's nothing we can do about it, but we can teach them strategies to recover a lot faster than what they would originally. Um, and you know, for the rest of their life, they're going to have to do things to keep it in check. If they don't, they'll be as bad as they were before they started. So this is kind of a basic um, understanding of what really is going on here. It's far more different than just a thyroid problem. Remember, the thyroid is just the victim. In reality, that's the last thing that I worry about. Um, you know, I'll work with medical doctors and endocrinologists a lot. We have lots of great friends that are, and we'll refer them to, uh, you know, get on proper thyroid hormones. But that's just one little piece to a huge puzzle here. Um, all righty, hope that helps. Thank you.